the things that we want in this community um, beyond simply, you know, creating some sort of underfunded program again. Because um, I grew up here, and I know what those underfunded programs feel like. And we, we, we thrive in spite of that, right? But um, it's time to thrive because of rather than in spite of. So, I, yeah, bro, Cause I, I think we can do a much better job. Because I mentioned it probably has to break your heart when you, as a performer, and you've been doing performances, like you said, since you were uh, school age, and now you're definitely in your adult years and everything. But yep. I, I know it's got to hurt your, hurt your feelings when you were talking to people, and we've had people like Monica Burns and others that have been guests on this show, even Reese Palmer, when you have these folks that are being asked to perform for little to nothing. And I'm going to imagine yeah. if you can get that on the national level, but definitely on the local level when you're – they're asking you to come and perform and wanting to give you, like, uh, just a little bit of money. I know my dad, who's an artist, a photographer, and other things, he gets quite disgusted when people want him to come and do a show and don't want to give him the rewards oh, that he has justly deserved. <laughs> yeah, they want, you, they want you to give them an entire performance and, and, and you know, spend two hours with them for, a, you know, a, 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 the price of a beer, right? Or, yeah, hey, we gave you some food. Or you know they love people love to tell artists that we're going to pay them an exposure, but you know I don't know if you can pay your rent with exposure. Uh, so yeah, I, I, it does break my heart. But I, you know I, I've been so long in this space and in this game, and I advocate for myself. Um, but it was a man. There were many years where I was doing free shows, Mark, and, you know, or taking peanuts to perform and packing out a venue, and the, the venue sells out of alcohol and sells out of tickets, and I walk out of there with seventy five bucks. Um, so I've definitely been there, and I, I, you know, obviously that's a passion point for me to advocate for our artist community. We we got to do better in general. So just really quickly, if folks are interested in the campaign, and I know you said you got to get off very shortly and everything, and we've only got about another yeah. ten minutes or fifteen anyway. But if folks are interested in the campaign, two questions: one, other than the issues that we just talked about, which is transportation, the housing, definitely trying to get our minority businesses. Are there in the police presence and everything? Are there any other issues that you're very passionate about that you would like the listeners to know about that you're very concerned about? And also, how would folks, like I asked Zainab, how would folks get involved in your campaign if they're interested in campaigning for you or involved in joining your team? Well, yeah, great. Thank you for thank you for giving me time to talk about that. So we did touch on a couple of the issues I'm, I'm, uh, that are on my platform. One is the holistic economic development strategy. The second is a public safety. Uh, strategy that works for Durham. The third is a workforce development strategy that partners with our school system and our county government to ensure that we are um, also engaging the business community to prepare Durham public school students for the jobs of the future and ensure that they have career opportunities that not only fit their passions but that pay them well. Um, That's a big piece of my strategy as well. And fourth, um, general inclusivity, uh, focusing on true inclusivity in Durham. We've got about uh, we've got 180 or so thousand registered voters in Durham. Only 10% or so of those showed up in the last election. That, to me, points to an absence of Durham voices in critical decisions. So as a part of my platform and also as a part of my campaign, I want to uh, re-engage all of Durham in the conversation. We need to have more voices in the room that are representative of this vast community. I mean, we've almost got 300,000 folks here. Uh, we need many more people to show up, not only to vote, but to show up for these crucial conversations that are impacting all of us. So um, in terms of engaging with my, with my campaign, my website is jgunfordurham.com. That's jgunn 4 for durhamcom jgunfordurham.com. We need all the help we can get. We're looking for volunteers to help us hit the streets and spread the message. We also, of course, are raising funds. Uh, my opponents are raising a significant amount of money, so I've got a big hurdle. Uh, in terms of raising money, but so we're accepting donations, five dollars, one dollar, whatever comfortable for you. Uh, Engage with us because we're, we're, we're restoring the voice of the people and bringing Durham back to the table for all of them. Okay, and one other quick question that you just made me think about and everything, and I'm just curious as to your answer to this and everything, and that is, among that group of people that you're running against is a member of the Latinx community. There might be some people that might be concerned that. If one gets bumped off, that would be the one that gets bumped off in terms of, like, not losing and not having their voice heard. So what can you tell the Latin folks that might be listening that would alleviate any concern that they might have that they might lose a voice if you gain a voice? Yeah, that's, that's a tough question for me to answer. You know, I, I, I'm, right now I'm running against 10 people. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't 
view it as if I'm running against only the three incumbents. I think there's some really uh, amazing. We got we got some really strong candidates, and I'm excited for the rest of the community to get to see and meet, and get familiar with the other people that are running. Uh, we do have Latinx representation that's campaigning uh, for a seat as well. So there is a, a Puerto Rican brother uh, who's campaigning, and he's a minister and, and deeply uh, ingrained in the Latinx community in Durham. You know, just like uh, as a black person, I believe in, you know, creating space and, and uh, allowing uh, black voices to be heard and, and ensuring that black voices are represented. Um, I feel strongly that Latinx voices need we need to create space and provide a platform for those uh, those people. And I, you know, I certainly would never claim to speak for the Latinx community, but I do stand for and fight for all marginalized and disenfranchised communities, including our Latinx uh, brothers and sisters and uh, our LGBTQ brothers and sisters, and uh, you know, all of Durham from a from the standpoint of elevating the voices of those that are often stifled. Um, so, you know, it's tough for me to speak to whom I, who I'm running against and who who may be displaced, because it's actually not about us as individuals. It's about Durham and what's best for Durham. And ultimately, the people will decide, and hopefully people will vote for what's best for Durham uh, and for all of us. So, I, I, you know, all, all I can do is be authentic and, and, and speak to the issues that matter to me and to my community and, and hope that it resonates with people enough to get their vote. And I definitely think that you've done an amazing job in terms of putting out your voice out there, not just in this run for city council, but just in general. And I think that you're definitely a voice that we'll be hearing from in the community for a number of years, whether that is as yes. a representative on the city council, or whether that's doing Black August in the park, or whether that's doing the various other things that you are involved in. But I don't think that we're going to be losing the voice of Josh Gunn anywhere. I think that you will definitely be <laughs> a voice, whether that is a voice in city council or a voice in other aspects. Um, and like I said, I know you were trying to jump off nine minutes ago, eight minutes ago, but if you want to give a yeah, quick sorry. shout out to Black August in the Park, because like I said, the show's only got about eight minutes, but if you want to give a quick shout out to Black August in the Park, because I know y'all have a couple of events that are coming up, including Black August in the Park, because it's almost all, it is all. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you for uh, reminding me to mention that. So I am, as you mentioned, one of the co-founders of Black August in the Park, which is a festival and movement here in Durham. Uh, steeped in the Black August tradition, which started in the 70s in the California penal system as a way to commemorate fallen freedom fighters and uh, center ourselves in the work of social justice. Our movement here in Durham centers around a festival that uh, happens this Saturday in Durham. It's a free festival uh, for all members of the African diaspora, for all black people to uh, connect with one another, to celebrate that, to celebrate their blackness in a safe space, and also to connect with social justice organizations, which we always feature at the event. It's our fifth year doing it. Um, so year five is going to be a big, big celebration. We've expanded it a little bit uh, to incorporate uh, a two-day festival. So on Friday we have what we're calling a conference, which is a conference centered around uh, connecting black folks uh, as a movement for its reparations and liberation. Saturday we're having a food party. We're having an all-black parade, which uh, will celebrate the diaspora. We'll have four tribes. We'll have... Uh, Afro-Latinx, Afro-Caribbean, African people from the continent, as well as African Americans. We'll have a sort of a carnival-style parade that walks through downtown and marches into Durham Central Park to, to uh, all come together for the big celebration that starts at 4 p.m. in Durham Central Park. Still looking for volunteers and anybody who wants to help us make this thing happen. We want to keep it free, and it is free for everybody. So blackaugustinthepark.com is the website for that. Um, Yes, please, come on, come on, all black people from everywhere. We want this to be a celebration for us and a safe space for us to celebrate one another. Well, I will definitely be there. I don't know what I've got on my hate time schedule. But if you need an MC at any part of the beginning or any part of the <laughs> afternoon, I am available. So I will let you know that if you need me to jump on the stage and keep things moving along, I can do that. And the other question I, I was going to ask bro. you real quickly is has to do with security. Because, like I said, we know that we're in the middle of this hate environment, and I know that I definitely saw more – well, a, saw the police presence when I went down to the National Black Theater Festival. I know some people were saw me recently today and were asking me if there was going to be additional security for um, Art of Cool because that's coming up, and we got a lot of these people that are being really stupid with their hatred and everything. So I was wondering, have y'all beefed up the security for Black August in the Park, or are you just going to feel that the love is going to be out there and we're not going to worry about these hatred people? Yeah, we certainly lead with love. Uh, I'm not the best person to answer that. My... Uh, comrades, partners at the Black Arts in the Park would be better equipped to answer the security question, but I do know that we will be fully prepared 
uh, and keep everybody safe. We'll leave with love. We'll be we'll be fully resourced. I'll just say it that way to make sure that you are safe. But we, you know, every year we're conscious and we stay vigilant uh, for any threats of violence against us or our people. So we'll be ready. Sounds like it would definitely be a wonderful event. I know that I've been down there, I think just about every year, at least for a minute or two, and it is always a beautiful event. And uh, I consider it one of the crown jewels of this area. I know that uh, there's other things I talk about, like the Eno and Center Fest, but Black August in the Park is definitely one of our great jewels. And in terms of our community, I put it up there with the National Black Theater Festival, which is every two years down in Winston-Salem. So it is definitely well, an art school. So there's definitely some things that are going on, doing a great job. I thought your performance was amazing at G's event. I thought G did a wonderful job in terms of organizing it, like I said, but I thought that you as the closer was a great way to close it and things of that nature. And in one of these shows, I'll actually grab one of your uh, YouTubes or something like that, and hopefully in one of our future episodes, we'll actually drop some of your lyrics so folks can hear what you are about lyrically as well, because like I said, I've known you as an activist, but I also know that you are an incredible musician. I know you'll be busy campaigning, but I might shoot you a note letting you know that I'm doing that, but definitely I want to drop some of your tunes on here in the future just so folks can hear it that may not be that familiar with it that may be from other states and other countries. And we do get a number of listeners, not just from here, but also California, various states around the Union, as well as various countries around the world. Smart. Thank you, brother. Yeah, I want to say, man, um, you know, you've always supported me, bro. You are, you are a great advocate for the art and for our people in this community. So big ups to you, man. Honored to have time to share space with you on this uh, show. And I hope to, hope to come on again, man. Please please invite me back on. I'd love to come back and talk some more. I would definitely have to be uh, – that was actually Zainab's second time, so I'm always very open to having guests come back on a uh, other time. Uh, I think I'm coming back around to getting this on and Risa on again. So definitely you know that you are always welcome to be back on. And if there's anything that you've got on your mind that you just want to share with the uh, listeners, no matter what's going on, all you got to do is just uh, hit me a note on – Facebook or by regular phone, but you know you are always welcome to return and uh, be on on a regular basis. I'm grateful, Mark. Thank you, man. Have a great night, man. All right. All right, brother. Peace. 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 Well, Gene, the static monster disappeared, and uh, that was the uh, show, and uh, definitely we got about uh, three minutes to go, but, uh, you know, Black August in the Park will be coming on this weekend, so as you can tell, I'm already going to be busy. Thursday is some uh, Blue show Saturday. I'll probably pop into Black August in the Park. We've got a play that uh, Rhonda Hatton is doing Friday at Hay Tie. So I already know that there's at least three or four days that I'm going to be having stuff going on and being in the mix as always. Like I said, there's no telling. I literally did not know about the thing with the um, minister that was uh, having the thing at Providence 1898 till the day before it happened when Reggie told me about it. I did not know about the uh, unveiling of the mural till the day of. So, like I said, I already knew that there were three or four things that were going to be on my calendar and two more mm-hmm. kind of here. So, you know, just being in the mix <laughs> as Joshua just said, there's no telling what I might be reporting on next week, but you do know whatever it is, it'll be something interesting and exciting. And we're just going to keep this thing rolling right along. We've actually got, you know, I've sent you invitations about three uh, the guy that does that uh, video show every Sunday, and I know you popped in and listened to what he's got. He did the one with the uh, Washington Post, uh, with the Washington Post editor recently. Well, we've got another one of his people. And you know, we've got his people before, so I believe next weekend, we're going to have an activist singer, a, a lady that has been involved in, like, folk singing, but singing the, and from an activist standpoint. So she does stuff dealing with everything from women's rights to just civil rights in general. He's not a big fan of that person sitting in the White House either, but I've got some lyrics of hers that I'm going to be uploading to our page, so we will actually have some of her music that we will be playing on that show, so we're going to have her on, and I think there's some other people that will be part of that show as well, but I'm definitely looking forward to that, and uh, we're going to have something that you'll be interested in toward the end of the month, but Lippy Roy, who is also a part of that show, and a regular person like myself listening and commenting with whatever guests they've got. She is a health advocate. You might have even seen Lippy Roy on the networks and everything, like ABC and things of that nature, but she just 
about health issues and particularly around addiction. So we're going to have her on this show as well. So we've got some amazing guests that are going to be joining us on this show, and it should just be off the chain. And so. 